What's the three most realistic ways you could put $400,000 cash in your bank account in the next 12 months? Let's talk about it. One disclaimer, I don't know where you live, so I don't know your tax situation. It's different if you're in Dubai versus California. I was on the phone with a guy who's in sales. He made a million dollars commission this year and he told me, but Ty only kept 750 of it. 200,000 went to the federal government and 50,000 went to the state. So we'll talk about, that's a little more advanced. We'll talk about that at the end. And this is for, a person who doesn't have a big social media following. This is for a person who doesn't necessarily even want to be on camera and try to become a social media influencer. What's the three most realistic ways? I'm going to tell you what I did when I started out. Now, I did not put 400000 in my bank account. I was a teenager when I started. But first thing I did was a food business. Real story. I have an intern program for one of my companies. And there's a guy who I have a company called Farmer's Cart. We sell food in the United States. And this guy's like, Ty, I copied your farmer's cart and I made Fisher's cart. He's like, Ty, you always say, Pablo Picasso, quote, good artists copy, great artists steal. But he goes, I made, I grossed a million dollars and netted about 150,000. So as an intern, I was like, oh, pretty good. You know, he just started working for me a, a week ago. Here's the crazy thing. He did it in the Philippines. A million dollars revenue in the Philippines, 150,000. When you look at the cost of living, so I'll just throw out there, food business, food security is becoming a big deal. Look at all the stuff happening in the world where food used to be this global network, but now with supply chain issues, you can start out simple, beef jerky. Look at Crave beef jerky. I think the guy sold it, started as like a college experiment, sold it for a couple hundred million. You see those Epic bars, he Quest. I was just with Tom Bilyeu, speaking at the NFT conference in Miami, he built Quest. Bar. Don't 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 sleep on the food business. One thing, what are people going to need? Food, shelter, water, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Too many people think it's an oversaturated market and they forget that it's, yeah, it may be oversaturated, but there's, guess what? <laughs> Eight billion people who we know need those three things, food, shelter, water. And I was just reading Bloomberg. It said the Cargill family, which is a, one of the big agricultural families in the United States, there's 150 of them. Who receive money it's a 200 or 150 year old business started with one grain bin food business in the midwest united states now 117 people split uh what did it say five billion profit from food one of the wealthiest families in the world you always think of the rothschilds the rockefellers people talk about don't sleep on the food business you can start something small my first business was at six i tried to sell cherry tomatoes you know, a little stand. I live kind of in the bad part of California and uh, nobody bought anything. I switched to lemonade, put a little sugar and stuff. People bought it. So you have everything from Jeff Bezos, billionaire buying Whole Foods. You have upstarts. There's a company a guy I know started True Local in Canada, build it, you know, deliver food in like, you know, it's kind of like butcher box kind of thing. Sold it for, I think 10, 20 million bucks. I, I don't know the exact number, but that is something that if you look at this intern I have in the Philippines, did 150,000 Philippines, that was in US dollars, by the way, but $115,000 in the Philippines is the buying power, like you're making 600,000 in the US. So I know that's not 400,000, like I said, in the video, but there's just an example where there's money to be made, food has become more scarce, prices are going up, that's number one. And I'll talk a little bit more of what I would do on a practical basis. I gave you this one. The guy made Fisher's cart. He sells uh, seafood locally, delivers it in the Philippines. That works in America. There's multiple businesses doing that. Started from scratch, making people a lot more than 400000 in their bank account. Number two, I'm going to go with old school sales. 80% of billionaires, if you read the self-made uh, billionaire effect, a study of self-made billionaires, people who didn't inherit their money, 70 to 80% of them started in sales. Mark Cuban, the billionaire is like, Ty, I started selling, you know, garbage bags door to door. What's Elon Musk? He's one of the great salespeople of all time. <laughs> he bought, I mean, he owns Twitter now. Now I'm not saying he's only a salesperson. He's expanded. He's certainly one of the great genius entrepreneurs of all time. But if you look at the core, if you read between the lines, he understands persuasion. And I would just say, if you want to, I was telling you at the beginning of this call about taxes, this guy made it as a real estate agent, did a million dollars commissions, 
sales. What, he, what that guy does that's unique for say real estate agents is that he didn't have a real estate agent background. He comes from a totally different background, like engineer, but he used that to make himself stand out for the crowd. So the way to make money in sales is through story-based persuasion. If you've seen my videos, you know, here in my garage, that was a story. And I was very persuasive to people. Not everybody. Some people's controversial. Some people said, oh, this is a get rich quick scheme. But at the core, the people who actually paid attention were like, wait a second, this story moves me. And so the way you can put $400,000 in your bank account is become a master storyteller. Now, how do you become a master storyteller? I have a fun way. Watch more Netflix movies, but watch the award winning ones. Watch the, don't watch, you know, the dumb ones. You're watching for a reason. You're watching to understand so you like Steven Spielberg. Here's a practical example or George Lucas, Star Wars, Return of the Jedi is one of the best selling movies of all time. Most well known Star Wars series. What is something that both George Lucas and Steven Spielberg did? Indiana Jones, Star Wars. They put one of the most exciting scenes at the beginning. So first thing you learn about persuasion is the hook. Whether you're doing a real estate agent, whether you're selling solar panels door to door, whether you're selling social media marketing agency or e-commerce services, you got to know your hook. And you can learn that by watching the great storytellers, movies on Netflix, Amazon Prime. I usually go to Amazon Prime. You can rent a movie if you want to save a little money and go to Academy Award winners. Action movies are great. You know, drama, things that move people. Great art moves people. Great salespeople move people emotionally. And so as you move from just pure logic into the emotional realm, you get good at sales. And when you get good at sales, everybody wants to hire you, especially if you'll work for commissions because there's no risk to the employer. So some of you have a solar panel business. They could be selling vacuums. They could be a social media marketing agent. They'll hire you if you say, yo, I'll come on, I'm a master storyteller. I know how to close through persuasion and emotion and storytelling. Like you can make $400,000 in two months. I have somebody who I did a biz, I did this business bodyguard program in 2017, back when I was in Beverly Hills. And I basically said, I'm going to bring 40 people come shadow me. And I started out with 40 people and I just cut it until who I thought were the best candidates. And one of the guys, Andrew, had spent time, he was on my social media. A lot of you saw him from Staten Island. Nobody in his family ever made much money, kind of from a rough neighborhood. I think he went on to do phone, uh, car sales. He went on, now he's actually working an investment bank in California, but he did car sales. He was doing over 400,000 a year because he learned per story-based persuasion. So that's the second thing. By the way, that food is great, but I would start with the story. <laughs> Number two, I'm giving you is a powerful one because you can extrapolate it into any area to make money. Number three is start an agency either. I'm going to give you three agency ideas. Okay. When I say an agency, it's kind of like consulting. You become a genius at something and you charge businesses. Your best is to charge businesses, not your next door neighbor. Charge a company that's making a million bucks five grand a month to do something for them. Best thing is marketing, e-commerce, and crypto. Now, crypto would be like crypto promo. So there's, if I'm starting my agency, I'm either starting an e-com one, there's a million people using Shopify. None of them know what they're doing. They don't know how to set up their Google Analytics. They don't know how to set up the APIs for the email and the SMS services. It's a no brainer. How do I know I own a big e-com company? a holding company. I own some of the biggest brands in the United States, 160 million people visited or 160 million visits to my e-com stores. You know, this is businesses doing way over hundred million dollars. I'm not saying that to brag. I'm telling you, I know as one, as a CEO of a huge e-commerce holding company, the hardest thing for me to do is hire people who know practical things. I will hire consultants. I have about 16 consultants working for me that I'm hiring. Some do Google analytics. Some will improve the email marketing, you know, even HR, a consultant who knows. So take a skill you have. I would focus it around marketing and e-com, but there's other things you could help people. Headhunters. My cousin, she went to high school with a couple of people who started Task Us, like out of their backyard. 
It's worth $2 billion now. All they do is connect companies who need customer support agents in like the Philippines and a couple countries. And they take a cut in the middle of the work. It's a $2 billion company. So they offer their service. So basically you become a genius at some business skill. It could be Google Analytics, it could be Facebook ads, it could be HR side of things. Um, it can be a paralegal. Sometimes you need a, a degree in that and sometimes you don't. Sometimes it can be basic bookkeeping, but maybe you don't do it all. You bring in the client through sales and persuasion and then you match up some people who work for you or you match them up with the offshore agency. This works. Like this can put $400,000 in your bank account in the next 12 months. Like this is realistic. Now, what if you have no skill now? Well, you can learn it quick now. You can, four months, you can learn hardcore skills. Ecom, no, very, I started Ecom decades ago. Like I started as a teenager. So like there's not many people. I can't find people like me. So I'll hire somebody who only has four months experience if they're sharpened on a quick learning curve. So, you know, I own Pier One and Radio Shack and all these about 30 million paying customers on my e-com. My, my weakness is not marketing. Um, it, it's not having a brand in businesses. We know how to do the tech. It's finding little specialized ninja geniuses, little genius. So e is great. How to set up your Shopify store, big commerce. I'm building a, my own e software called Brahms. We'll be connecting people with consultants. They peep the, out of these million people have Shopify stores, probably 99% of them are set up wrong because the average person who builds a e-commerce store doesn't want to become an expert on any, every nitty little gritty thing. So Google analytics is a great one. I'm actually looking today at five different Google analytics consultants. Cause I buy companies and I buy companies faster than I can hire enough people to install Google analytics. It's a free piece of software. You can get a Google analytics. They have Google Analytics University free course Google offers. You get a certificate. You can take it. I don't know. It takes a week or something. That's a skill you can leverage. Just Google Analytics into $400,000 a year. Like per brand I have, if I knew somebody could set up Google Analytics right and I had to drop 10, 20,000 per brand, you know, and I buy companies sometimes for one a month. Google will even put you on their directory if they're good and refer people to you who search. Uh, you can go on Upwork. That's a clear $400,000 winner right there. Anything around e-com, setting up stores for people, but not the whole store, just fixing one little thing. Of course, Facebook ads, of course, running their Instagram, TikTok virality is something people are gonna pay. All the restaurants, just restaurants, doctors, dentists, cosmetic surgeons are gonna pay you. Like, come on, they don't wanna do this. Think they wanna do this? A doctor who's 60 years old, been doing orthopedic surgery, you think they wanna be like, oh, I wanna learn how to be a TikTok viral. Influencer, no, never. Maybe they'll go on the camera though if you hold the camera so you don't have to be in the videos. You can charge an arm and a leg. If you bring high-end businesses, customers, you can charge a crazy number. First person I started training back six, seven years ago, he didn't even have a bank account. First doctor gave him $20,000. His first question to me, I was mentoring him, he was shadowing me, was Ty, how do I open a bank account? Never had opened it. He was like 19. This works. And by the way, you might say, is it more saturated now? Yeah, but there's more supply of e -com for you to pursue. Supply and demand is, and by the way, you can say the supply. You can be on the demand side or the supply side, depending on how you look at it. Either way, the supply to demand ratio of ninja experts is in your favor, in your favor. People still going to college, getting a traditional business degree. I mean, I stopped, I hire hundreds of people a year. I stopped looking at people's college degree resume because I'm like, I'm on the cutting edge. So if you're on the cutting edge, you live on the cutting edge of one little skill, how to, if you can bring people, coders, devs, programmers to build their website for them, they might need custom content or designers. You don't, you can just be a, if you're good with people, you can just be a HR middle person where you're like, Hey, I have 10 people that you can go to Upwork and say, you want me to find you work? You can find people everywhere that want work. You connect them with businesses. You take 20% cut. You put $400,000 in bank account. You do 2 million through there at 20%. That's nothing. You know, that's nothing because these are high paid people you place. So 
this video can be longer and longer. I, what I, the point of this video is like, let me show you like real, three real ways. Number one, food business. I like it. It's relevant to where the world is now. All the stuff happening in the world, supply chain issues, global, you know, international strife, war, all this. People go back to basics, want food. Number two, people, all companies need salespeople. If you're extroverted or even introvert and you can get out there and talk to people, just tell stories. Sales isn't even, you know, like, you know, Wolf of Wall Street, sell me this pen. I'll tell you how to sell a pen and need a story about the pen. You're not gonna be able to just take a pen with no story, a regular pen. I've got one here, big pen. You can't, there's no salesperson in the world that alone makes that compelling. But if there's a story behind it, this is the pen, you know, that the president of the United States was holding when he did blankety blank blank. And this is inspirational pen. Sure, you're not the president of the United States, but buy this from me for 200 bucks. You got bragging rights on it. You can turn it into an NFT if you want. Like all of a sudden, you, somebody might pay you $200 for a big pen. That's a dollar, but it has to have a story. That's kind of a stupid example, but I'm just saying you can weave stories all day long. If there's somebody whose mind races, you have anxiety like a lot of people, harness the anxiety into storytelling because the, the hallmark of an anxious person, one of them is their minds kind of races a lot, maybe in the middle of the night, but you can harness that. You could turn lemons into lemonade. In the modern world, everything gets medicated away. But if you look at evolution, the reason some people are hyperactive or ADD or anxious, it has what Dr. David Buss, my mentor, taught me is called, you know, an evolutionarily or evolution, uh, evolutionary adaptive purpose. You're part of a long chain of successful DNA. Grandparents who survived and great, great grandparents who survived and thrived despite whatever handicap they had, whether it be anxiety, depression, you know, <laughs> coming from nothing. And a lot of it was done through storytelling. It's an underrated tool. I was reading the Romanov Empire, a book on the Romanov Empire, you know, started basically late 1500s, early 1600s. But one of the great Russian empires. Uh, um ended in 1917, mid World War One, the Bolshevik Revolution. But those, the good storytellers, like Peter the Great, Catherine the Great, Ivan the Terrible. If you think about US history or European history, you have people, you know, Abraham Lincoln, Tess, Nikolai Tesla. There's stories around these people. That's all you have. So this number two, as you become a master storyteller, Money flows into your bank account if you can harness it in some form of a commercial way. And if you want to be an artist, you can do it through movies. If you don't want to be commercial and be a door-to-door -door salesperson or be a phone salesperson or do any type of sales, there's still the, the medium of art. And even all music is telling a story. It doesn't use words, but it paints an emotional pic picture. It triggers hormones in the brain when you hear this song that has cognitive dissonance you think, ah, it brings out the emotions. It's telling a story of anger and strife. And when this, the music is melodic, it's telling a story of peace. And so great musicians are also just storytellers, whether they be classical artists, you know, r and B, what even, you know, DJs, electronic music, it's all the same. And so as, as you become that person in this second practical way, a great storyteller, whether it be through word, for, for those of you hyper introverted, you don't want to be on video and social media, write a book, an ebook. Um, I have a student of mine, one of my followers, who just does ebooks and makes $100,000, $200,000 per ebook. And then moves on and writes another one, writes a real practical skill one, makes a little funnel for it, how to do how to use Google Excel better. You could write a book on how to do Google Analytics. So, and books like that, get some reviews on them. That's a whole nother conversation, but there's something for everybody in the sales and persuasion area. And then that third area I talked about, which is take a micro skill that you learn that you can teach yourself in under four months and harness it into cash flow. Into cash flow. You become an e-com specialist, you become a Google Analytics specialist, you become an email specialist, you become a social media posting specialist. By the way, if you don't like the sales side, you team up with a salesperson. Post on your Instagram story like, 
even if you only have 3000 followers on Instagram, be like, Hey, I'm starting a business. I need somebody who's more outgoing than me to help me sell it. Extroverts will pop in friend of ask a friend of a friend. There's, I started my email list, you know, which uh, has generated 50 million plus of revenue. I don't even know more than that. And I started in 2012 and I started with 10 to 20 people. I remember it was such a small email list. I just CC'd them all. And I, what my specialty back then that helped people added value was I would read a book that people didn't have time to read and I'd write a one page summary and I'd give it to them for free. And off that, I then could ask people, hey, I want to do this. Anybody know somebody like this? So you build your network too, as you become a specialist in one simple thing. You can do it in fitness and nutrition too. You know, that's a pretty saturated market, but there's still money to be made. You're going to be in it. But if, I, if you go into fitness, look at that Instagram liver king, one of the best branding I've seen. You know, he just specializes in people who want to eat meat, who want to eat bone marrow, who are into the primal. He doesn't try to capture the whole market. He doesn't go after vegan, vegetarian, flexitarian, pescatarian. He's like, yo, I'm hardcore. I lift heavy weights. And, and that story, as my second mentor, Island Nation, told me, said the crazy thing about a large population world is no matter what niche, small thing you know, there's a million people interested in it. You could pick any weird thing. You didn't want to know all the things that I don't even want to know all the weird things that interest people. But like I said, his specialty is eating bone marrow and liver. For you know, most people thought of liver as a punishment. He's turned into a whole multi-million dollar brand or maybe even eight-figure brand. So micro focus. And then you take that, you either harness it through a service where you charge $500 to $5,000 a month, or you can productize it which is a whole nother video and a little more advanced, but if you're getting any value from this, I'm gonna start posting some more videos. Smash the subscribe button, leave a comment. What did I forget? What did I leave out? I'm just doing this off the cuff. So, you know, on a Saturday afternoon, what did I forget? Leave a comment. What do you disagree? I'm not, a, I'm not scared of controversy. What's BS about this? Oh, Ty, this won't ever put $400,000 in a bank account. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, there's more 20-year-old billionaires in human history right now. I was just reading the story of the guy who started, uh, what was the app? Uh, Bolt. He's like mid-20s, worth a couple bill. And it's just happening. While the naysayers, I told people years ago, like, yo, this thing, this age of entrepreneur is here and people, and everyone was like, oh, Ty, this is a get rich quick scheme. And now there's more wealth created in the hands of people who usually in history, no young people had wealth. That was something you had to be pretty old. I mean, if you were in the 1800s, there was no 20 year old billionaires, unless they inherited the money or through royalty, you know? So, sun's starting to get strong here. Keep the mind open, ignore the skeptics. You know, bigger you get, the cooler it will be to criticize you among your family. <laughs> That's what will happen. Bigger you get, the more money starts to, nothing pisses people off more than money. I post videos on my farm, nobody ever gets mad. I post a video with a Lamborghini. Boy, all the tall poppy syndrome amongst those who uh, are Machiavellian pops up. You're going to experience it. So I'll give you this little warning. And I'll talk about taxes for a second. Um, I, I'll record a video on, do you really want to get rich? You should watch it it's somewhere on my YouTube. It's a little warning to you. Welcome to the jungle. Not everybody should go in the jungle. Even the jungle, even though wealth seems fun, the wealth comes with snakes, quick scans, quicksand and jaguars ready to jump and kill you. And uh, so, Maybe 400,000 is all you need to make. If you're smart, live off the land, live cheaply, you might be able to take 400,000 and go far. You just got, you only gotta get rich once, you know? 400,000 is not rich, but it is if you're in the Philippines and I have a global audience. So this isn't just to people who are living in the US. Now taxes, Let, let's just talk about this. I'm not giving you professional tax advice. I'm not a CPA, I'm not a tax accountant, but I am somebody who has, spends a couple million dollars a year on tax attorneys, CPAs, cross, I, 
own 40 or 50 assets. So I'll tell you what I learned from accounting and legal and that kind of more boring stuff, specifically taxes. Um, think hard, long and hard about where you live. Jeff Bezos became one of the richest people in the world because he was mindful and he was um, intentional about where he lived. Most people just live wherever they were born and that's okay. Maybe you live there because you have family or whatnot, but if you want to pursue this game correctly, you need to at least be intentional. So that could be living in a different state. If you're in the United States, it could be a slightly different structure, but it needs to be part of the game. I, I putting this in this video, this is a subject most people will shirk and shy away from of making 400 grand, you know, especially those of you in crypto. I just did a, I own an app called Speakeasy. It's a pot, live podcast app. And I brought a CPA who specializes in crypto in. If you live in the U S or many countries, it's going to be, a, it's going to be a crazy game. What happens on coin for coin, you know, token for token type swaps, NFTs, mining, how those are taxed. If you're getting rewards, staking rewards. Anyway, yeah, that's a whole nother video, but what I will say is those people who are not intentional create wealth, they build something and then they give it all away. You should pay taxes, but, um, <laughs> how do I say this diplomatically pay what you owe, but make sure you know what you're doing. And the simplest thing you can do is think about where you live. Now, for those of you outside the U.S., it's much different because U.S. taxes you based on your passport. They don't care where you live, um, with few exceptions. Other countries are not that way. U.S. is and one other country, I think Kenya or something, are the only two countries that tax you by passport. So, you know, be intentional. Wealth is created through wise intentions and pre-planned. You can't plan everything. You know, Clausewitz, the, the famous German general in the late 1800s, early 1900s, who really created the German war machine, which you can argue the ethics of it. But one thing he used to say is that, you know, very plans don't withstand contact with the enemy. Or as Mike Tyson said, everybody has a plan until I punch him in the face. So um, if it's me, I'm going, why do I live here? Where else could I live part time? I'm talking to the CPA. It's like, yo, I think I'm gonna start making money. And you have to have a saying. When you see a tidal wave coming, don't wait to the last minute to jump out of the way because the tidal wave has long and far flung reach. So if you think you're gonna start making some real money, um, you need to have thought about this ahead of time because the money will, it's very easy to have a money come in one hand and go out the other. You know, I, first time you pay seven figures in taxes, you'll be like, I understand this video, doc. Some of you might be paying a mil, five mil, 10 million in one year in taxes. And you go, wow, money goes out easy, but it's a little trickier to get in. So you can't just think as uh, Elon Musk loves to quote the famous business quote, only the paranoid survive. Um, I'm not sure I like that one from the standpoint of like, do I really want to be paranoid just to enhance my survival? Maybe, but what I would say is that it's the organized and conscientious that survived. That's the real science, conscientiousness. If you look at a Hexco score, which is a more advanced personality test than 16 personalities and Myers-Briggs and so on. When you look at that, what the real science shows, it's those people who have conscientiousness. And one of the sub facets of conscientiousness is organization, diligence, uh, diligence prudence, and uh, perfectionism. So perfectionism, they think they they think a little bit about their taxes ahead of time. They think about their jurisdiction they're going to be in. They think about structures. And if you don't understand, I remember starting out, I'm like, you know, now I'm multinational in the sense that I own companies. I just oh, signed a restaurant deal in, in Europe and I do hotels and global stuff. But I remember starting out and being overwhelmed. Good news is a lot of good stuff on Google. I'll, I'll record some content on this stuff about being international and some of the pros and cons. Um, but purposes of this video in this section that I'm talking about now is to get the mind spinning and to get the mind active and go, hmm, I don't have to just live where I am. I don't have to just 
suffer. I can take as uh, the great Thor Heyerdahl, the explorer, the Norwegian hero, you know, he said, it's kind of like we're puppets and strings, it seems. Other things, you know, you can't control your parents. You can't control where you're born. You can't control if you're born into wealth or not. But he said, you can pull on the strings. We're not just puppets. And when I think about making 400000 if I was starting over, putting that in a bank account, I'm going, part of that is me be proactively pulling on the strings ahead of time. Starting to think through, how am I going to do my books on my account? How am I going to set up my legal? Where am I going to live? Where's the business going to run through? How am I going to manage my expenses so I can legally deduct what I can deduct? And as you go down that path, all of a sudden you go to a higher level. You're not just somebody who can make $400,000 in a year. You're somebody who, as the saying goes, he who is faithful with the little will be faithful with a lot or she. And so when you're not faithful, when you make your first 400 grand and it all goes out the back door and expenses, somebody steals it from you, a family member will often try to steal money from you, frivolous lawsuit, a spouse, an ex, the tax man. You know, even when you're not faithful on that 400,000, why should you ever make 4 million? I have found whatever religion you believe, I have found whether you're an atheist or not, there is this overriding principle that seems to move through planet Earth, which is, People who are sloppy with little stuff never get the big stuff. I shouldn't say never. There's always exceptions. But in general, like, you know, I was born to a single mom. My dad was in prison in Long Beach, not a rich part of Los Angeles. And um, I now met the ultra wealthy and, you know, billionaires and have mentors and, and kind of be in different social circles. And when I started and I have not found anyone on the top who's sloppy. But a lot of my poor friends, I still have a lot of poor friends, they're all sloppy, they are, or most of them are. So we like to think like, oh, it's all luck that you make money. And sure, there's always a large element of luck. There's an element of luck in your being born, you know, being born healthy. But the element of luck, then if all humans have luck, then you can hold that constant, uh, you can hold that variable constant. And therefore, if all humans are born with an element of risk, that variable is held constant. Guess what? Then you have to focus on what's not constant for all people. And there's massive variation among humans and people who pay attention to what they're doing and people who aren't lazy and people who don't procrastinate and people who have control over their own mind and emotions and have the discipline that comes from that. And they get rewarded. And I'm telling you, take it from me firsthand. I can tell you, you don't need to read about this in some blog. I don't meet sloppy people at the top, none ever in terms of self-created wealth. I haven't met every rich kid who just inherited their parents' money. Um, I have met some, they tend to be uh, boof heads, you know, as you would expect, but you got to reverse engineer. Okay. It's not just about getting 400,000 in a bank account. It's going, once I have the 400,000, how do I continue to deploy the assets? And now you get an M and A, which is something that I do you know, full-time buying businesses and stuff. We'll talk about that in another video. Smash the like and subscribe. Leave a comment on what I forgot to say. I'm sure I missed something here. It's an exhaustive topic and I just, I'm headed to the gym. So I just thought I'd pop in trying this new cinematic view on this iPhone 13. So um, yeah, head over to tylopas.com. I got a VIP list. I just coded this new technology to be able to send my SMS list, my text list to everybody in the world, because it used to be hard with Twilio and these guys to send if you didn't live in America. So I'm going to be sending out once a week some kind of cutting edge videos that I'm not going to post on my public stuff. So head over to tylopez.com, join the SMS list if you want those. It's free, you know, and you can unsubscribe. Carrier rates may. What is all this disclaimer? If you live in a world, you gotta disclaim everything. Yo, if you watch this video, you may not make 400,000, even though the title says you might. Like, I gotta make a disclaimer. Like, this is where civilization finds itself. You know, the inability to take any responsibility. So, somebody watches a video on YouTube that says, here's how to make 400, and they don't make it, and they're like, I'm gonna blame the YouTube. Oh, bro, this is, this is YouTube or Facebook. This is like, education slash entertainment you know at the end of the day you have to learn it yourself it's like the dalai lama says three levels of learning 
One is hearing, comes in one ear, not absorb. The second is hearing thoughtful about it and it you try to be intentional. The third is second nature. So that second nature, when making money second nature, then the game becomes easy. But like a sport, how does the game become second nature? It comes through repetition and 10,000 hours to one the average chess master is what, 25,000 hours? So unfortunately, if you came to this video and you thought, I've seen videos that are even simpler. I saw a video on YouTube was how I make $50 every two minutes or something on autopilot. And I was thinking, I know why that has a lot of views. Suckers born every minute, I guess. <laughs> That's not my message to the world. My message is that 400,000 people put in their bank account if they build hardcore skill, which can be built much faster than ever in a, in a highly kind of rapidly advancing society where everybody who's skilled at something 10 years ago, they're outdated knowledge. That's what my contention against universities. By the time they write these textbooks, which take two years, that stuff's already outdated. The stuff I'm doing on my econ brands, peer one, stuff like that, did, that what worked six months ago doesn't work anymore. So you got to stay on the edge knowledge, my friends. So anyway, talk to you soon.